to Conscious Love. My name is Maria Appelquist, and today I'm having Sandra and Marcus Ray with me uh, for a conversation about what it means to create conscious relationships. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having us. It's so exciting. I'm so excited to have you here, and I'm um, I'm having a series of questions. The first one I, I want us to start with is, of course, what does consciousness mean to you? Mm. Well, consciousness is awareness, isn't it? I mean, we're we're conscious of what we're aware of. So I would say consciousness is the quality of our awareness. And I think consciousness has to do with understanding how your mind works and being very clear that your thoughts produce your results. And both couple, both parties in the couple have to know that, otherwise it's very difficult. So yeah. Know that our thoughts are always producing our results and that makes us conscious. Mm. Our implication of consciousness is kind of the mind, you know, when we talk about consciousness, we're, we're talking about the realm of the mind and what is in the mind, the content of the mind. Wouldn't, wouldn't we say that is our consciousness? Yeah. So, so the mind is something that we study and that is very important in any relationship, it is, is the content of that mind that meets another mind, and then you have a relationship. But you have to have a clear mind. You can't have a lot of garbage in it. <laughs> <laughs> That's, uh, and how, actually, so how do you know, this is something I've been pondering about, and, and also like, how do you know if you're conscious or not? And how do you explain consciousness to someone that is not conscious? So. Uh, <laughs> They have to, again, understand that their thoughts create their results, and you have to explain that to people. You know, we should have learned that in the first um, day of school, that negative thoughts produce negative results and positive thoughts create positive results. Mm -hmm. But a conscious couple also understands that their subconscious thoughts are affecting everything, and they know how to process those subconscious thoughts. So I think that makes you more aware. And if you don't know that, it can get very tricky. Mm -hmm. There are different levels of consciousness, and, and there is a, a big level called the subconscious. So yeah. those are the thoughts that we're not always so aware that we have in, in our consciousness, and um, they can be producing uh, negative results in our life. And so it's, it's important to uh, transmute those, those factors uh, into kind of a neutral state so that they're not continuing to produce negative effects. And you know, we have techniques for clearing our subconscious mind. One is called liberation breathing, which we use a lot to be clear. And I think that's so valuable to have some kind of a spiritual process like that, that you can use together to be clear. That's, that's one of the basis of our relationship is that we, not, we don't get stuck and, um, because we can lie down and breathe it out. Mm. So and you really have a practice together. I know that this is something you're teaching, but you're also doing it together. Yes, together. Yes, yeah, we, we do. Yes, we do it to others, and since we're both breath workers, we can do it on each other. So that's mm. the, the ideal scenario for a conscious relationship that both of you are breath workers, and you can actually do a liberation breathing session on each other. Mm. So that's one of the miracles we have in our relationship. Wow. How did you meet each other? Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I know that's an expression also of consciousness, but... Yeah, I think I was more conscious of Sandra Ray when we first met than she was of me. Um, I met her in 1985 in a class that she was teaching called the Loving Relationships Training. And she had taught that class all over the world. And I just happened to be at one of her classes in Philadelphia. And I met her and she more or less became one of my spiritual teachers, guides, what have you. Um, she has taken groups to India every year for 40 years. And I was on a couple of those India quests. Um, but at the time, I was still in another relationship. So it was very platonic, our, our relationship at that point. 
But then fast forward 20 years later, and I'd been in this marriage for 30 years, <laughs> and you know how things, people go their own way and they grow apart. So uh, that marriage, my, my ex-wife and I grew apart, and so it ended. And then as soon as it ended, I had not seen Sandra Ray in 20 years, uh, lo and behold, she shows up again in Philadelphia giving a workshop, and I went to attend. Um, and again, that kind of rekindled my, my fire for uh, her in my life. And one thing led to the next, and before you knew it, we were together as a couple. So that's the short story. But, uh, <laughs> meanwhile, uh, meanwhile, I had been single for a long time, and I was fine. I was really happy. But then I made the decision that I wanted a holy relationship in this incarnation. And that was a very important day that I made that decision. And then I wrote to my guru, Babaji, and I said, um, I need an arranged marriage. You have to pick my <laughs> husband because I'm a, pub I'm a public figure. I can't afford to have the wrong man. And I need someone that fits the mission. And you know that. So... Um, Actually, Babaji put us together. I'm convinced of it. Yeah, Sandra calls that the cosmic dating service. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> cosmic dating service. Uh, cosmic. The kind of <laughs> dating service all the women want to have. Your spiritual masters to provide the perfect person, the perfect mate for you. Mm. But I have been so independent that I had to take certain... Um, steps to open up to that and so I did some mantras and I did some prayers and I actually went out and bought some presents for a man I didn't know who they were for just to bring him down into this dimension <laughs> so mm. I was preparing myself and, mm. then he came to, and I was so surprised that he was available and then we got together easily mm. and it's been very easy because we have the exact same spiritual path I think that's one of the uh, really things to talk about we're both breath workers, we're, we're both writers, we're both breath workers, we're both teachers of the Course in Miracles, and you know, we both study Hawaiian spirituality, and so our spiritual paths are alive. Mm -hmm. So we are always doing spiritual things together, which makes it a holy relationship. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, this is probably a very stupid question, but in some way, like what's the difference between this relationship and the previous one you had? Mm. Oh, okay. Well, well, there, there are a couple of differences. I, I think, you know, speaking of consciousness, and that includes um, how you begin a relationship and what are, the, what are the premises of that relationship or what are the foundations of that relationship. They're very important. And I think when you get together in your 20s, you're not so aware of those underlying foundations of, of your agreements that you have. Uh, and we kind of rely on traditional, conventional, uh, you know, agreements that are already in place, like your family expectations, your religious expectations. And we use that for the basis, but that's not really coming from the core of us. That's our conditions past that's uh, making those, those agreements. But when you're conscious, you make the agreements yourself. And one of the agreements Sandra and I made when we first got together was we wanted to have a conflict-free relationship. And we actually made that agreement. We said, if we're gonna get together, we're not gonna use anger or conflict or, or any of the sabotaging. Other, other sabotaging emotions that people use to, uh, to relate and to overcome things because they don't really overcome anything. You know, when you get angry, it doesn't really solve a problem. So we decided we wanted to have a conflict-free relationship and we would always use our spiritual practices to get us through any difficulties. And that at the end of the day, we would always come back and, and uh, you know, resolve whatever that difference was that we had. So that was one of the most important agreements that we made. And I think that was one of the main foundations for, for our holy relationship. And that's how it differed from the relationships we had before. Another thing is I had decided my idea of a good relationship was deep ease. 
So um, I really meditated on that a whole year before Marcus came in my life so that I could handle deep ease. And, uh, you know, and the way that's different than my former relationships, I wouldn't say they had deep ease. I would say there was tension or uh, conflict and, you know, sometimes arguing or I was into debating with my ex-husband. And we don't ever have that kind of situation. Um, and, you know, we, we decided to create a new paradigm, which is like a spiritual partnership where you're together for the evolution of your souls. And I never had that before either. So uh, th this is really important. I call Marcus my ascension buddy. So mm. we help each other ascend the spiritual ladder. Mm. Yeah. I'm, I'm hearing you built the foundation for yourself, both in the, the structure of not having conflict, but also having the breath work and different kind of, of techniques that you're using together. So did you, um, did you create some kind of practice or something you're doing as a, as a regularity, as a couple for bringing that connection together? That's, that's, a good, that's a good question. You know, they have that very simple saying, uh, families that pray together stay together. So, I mean, not to make it any kind of a, a ritual or anything like that, but both of us had uh, various spiritual practices that we, we did before we came together. And it was very natural for us to just continue those. For example, um, we're both students of The Course in Miracles. And this is a, a very important uh, psychological, spiritual book that came out in the 1970s. And we've been studying it for 40 years. So that, that book has a, a, a very specific practice of doing a lesson a day for one year. So this is just one example. When Sandra and I first got together, um, I think we did those lessons actually for two years, and we never missed a day, and we always did the lesson in the morning. And I think for even a year, we made recordings of our little dialogues uh, that we had you know, on each of the lessons. So that was a spiritual practice for us, and, and we maintained it, and that, that really kind of cemented our holy relationship because uh, we got in the habit of doing spiritual practices together. And that's just one of them. Another uh, one is we do mantras. We both had mantras from our masters before we came together. And so we would do them together. And sometimes when we take a walk, we take our mala bees with us and say, Om Namah Shivai, Om Namah Shivai, Om Namah Shivai. And then one whole year, we did uh, the 108 names of the Divine Mother out loud every morning. So we vary it. And uh, I also have gratitude books I do. So we have various different um, spiritual practices that we do together and that we do alone, and they work. They really make a difference. I want to just say one more thing about spiritual practices. There's nothing special about them. I mean, you can turn anything into a spiritual practice. Like Sandra mentioned, we would go on a walk and we would take our mala beads and say our mantras. But the walk itself uh, can be a spiritual practice. Anything that you do together uh, with, with a lot of love, with a lot of attention, with a lot of awareness and how you're approaching it, um, a lot of peace and joy, anything that brings you peace and joy together is a spiritual practice. Uh, you can go to a ball game together and have a great time. And now that's, there's nothing less valuable about that in, a, as, in terms of a spiritual practice than, than doing something like reading The Course in Miracles. You know, if you're doing it in this, this spirit of togetherness and harmony and joy, that's a spiritual practice. Yeah. I love that. Everything that brings you uh, peace and joy is a spiritual practice and doing it together. Yes. Yeah. Have you, um, even though you have that, did, did you have any kind of challenges? And mm -hmm. when challenges comes up, how have you faced that? Okay. Well, um, you want to start that, or <laughs> I, I've got a lot to say on that one. <laughs> because I can imagine the way you had challenges has probably been different from previous relationships when you had yeah. challenges. Yeah. 
So I'm, I'm interested in what's the shift here and what's been different for you. Well, usually our challenges aren't, aren't in the home. There are once we step one foot out of the home and now we have to deal with our, our world and our work life and um, we travel around and we give seminars and workshops around the world and retreats. So now we have to deal with many, many people, um, you know, producers, organizers, participants, you know, so now, and even clients who come to us. So now we're having to deal with the out there and that's where the challenge comes because, you know, the life and the world is going to throw a lot at you that maybe people aren't necessarily in your own vibration. Mm -hmm. So now you have to meet them at their vibration and uh, try to lift them up, or maybe they're higher than you and you have to go up to their level. So that's where the challenge is. I mean, we're not, we, we're not living in a vacuum. We all have some kind of uh, expression or work in the world that we're doing. And that's mostly where the challenges are because you have ideas of how you would like your, your work to go, um, but now you have to implement it, you have to manifest it. So, and in that manifestation, you have to deal with a lot of factors and a lot of people. And so, uh, I mean, it's a, it's, it too is a joyous and peaceful thing if you're in the right mindset, but that's usually where the challenges come up is in your work, your work life. Uh, if you want to know, especially in our personal life, if there's a challenge, I think you wanted to know that. Mm, okay. uh, I could say something funny, you know, um, Marcus was induced in his birth. And <laughs> so um, I understand different types of birth trauma, fortunately. So sometimes I feel like I had to induce him at the beginning to get going. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I didn't want to force him because uh, induced people resent it when authorities make them do stuff. So I had to be real careful. So I would say, well, now I'm going to induce you. And I kind of make it a joke. And this was kind of a challenge so because he didn't like to be told what to do. So <laughs> we had to work out that aspect of his birth trauma. Mm. And, uh, so I, I would say little things like that came up, but uh, we knew how to handle it. Mm. So I'll just say from my side, you know, Sandra has a habit of leaving all the lights on. <laughs> and her, her thought is I'm not perfect. So she'll always do some little thing that kind of can be irksome, you know, can be bothersome. <laughs> so I had to learn to just turn off lights without any reaction. So, uh, so you know, little things like that. Everybody has little things in their in their tendencies that that come up, and you just have to look at the big picture and not let the little things uh, bug you, you know, and just move through them. Uh, I think the reason we didn't have a lot or haven't had a lot of big conflict is because we understand conflict resolution and we have very good techniques for solving that. So if he and I disagree on something, we sit down and we say, let's go for a solution. And then we both drop our positions. We both drop the need to be right. And then we say, well, what is the highest spiritual thought we could come to for a solution to this issue? And then he might channel some high thoughts and I might channel some high thoughts and we go back and forth and back and forth. Mm -hmm. And then if he gets the highest spiritual thought, then I gladly go up to his thought. Mm -hmm. If I get the highest spiritual thought, he gladly goes up to my thought. And this totally prevents arguments, you know, and we teach this to all of our students, but some of them forget to do it. Mm -hmm. But we don't forget to do it. We, we do this all the time. So that keeps you out of conflict. Mm -hmm. And that brings up another very important point in a, relationship you have to have communication mm -hmm. communication is like the heart of the relationship so you you have to be very open and very um very willing to communicate what you're feeling and not suppress and not stuff things because uh, that's where the resentment starts building up so communication is kind of the 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 uh it's the, it's the thing that keeps your relationship clear. You know, when you, when you speak what you're feeling, when you speak what you're thinking, and then, okay, if you have, uh, you're not on the same page, 
then you can look at both sides and get on the same page. But if you don't talk about it, right. it just stays stuck. And you have to use nonviolent communication, you know, the real, no attack thoughts, you did this, you did that. Mm -hmm. uh, nonviolent communication is also called compassionate communication. And we use that and uh, we try to treat each other well. You know, that's, you know, I, I guess the, the secret that I have that works in my relationship is I treat Marcus as I would an honored guest. You know, I, if I had an honored guest in my home, I would dress up and look good. So I do that, even though uh, people think it's crazy. Sometimes I wear jewelry just around the house. Because he's an artist, and he deserves to see me looking good, you know? Yeah. So <laughs> I think that's my little secret for making this relationship work, is I, I try to respect him and treat him as an honored guest. Mm. And that really works. I love that, to treat him as an honored guest. That's mm. really beautiful. Can we, can we talk about sex? Sure. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> what's different in your sex life in this relationship? Uh, well, I think it's more holy. Uh, it has a tenderness. Um, it, um, there's not um, fear or pain. And it seems like we try to put that right in our spiritual context. So uh, it's, we consider it a holy thing. Mm. We, have, we have the right thoughts about it. I think before... I probably didn't, in other relationships, I didn't have the right thoughts about sex. And again, it all depends on your thoughts. And, you know, the Course in Miracles would say, all that matters in sex is are you in the Holy Spirit's thought system or are you in the ego's thought system? Mm. And if you're in the ego's thought system, there's a lot of separation, fear, guilt, pain, anger, and those things are mixed in with sex. And it doesn't work. Mm. So I... I can comment too. Being an artist, I'm I'm very sensitive to uh, environment and beauty and things like that. And Sandra is as well. So um, I think we're very uh, we pay a lot of attention to the environment of our of our love making and where and and how and what's the what's the ambiance and what's the music. Um, what's the food you had leading up to it? You know, it's it's a whole kind of a uh, a thing, and you can't leave out uh, any part of it. So it has to be in a in a place of beauty. I know sometimes when we're on the road and we're staying in places that uh, we're we're not so you know uh, it's it's not quite our vibe. It's, we just know that that's not the right place for, for lovemaking. So it ends up being quality over quantity. And, and you know, I often say to Sandra, you know, in, in our relationship, um, it, it's not even the frequency that we do. We have this lovemaking. It's the quality that when you come together, it's so beautiful and so high that maybe that sustains us for uh, a couple of months on the road, you know, when we don't have that environment. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not to say that we, we don't make love on the road, but um, the, the quality of everything has to be considered. So if one thing is off, it's like, we're not going to just have sex to be having sex. Mm -hmm. It has to be, it has to be a whole thing. It has to be, you know, just like, like anything else, we we want excellence in all aspects of our life, and and that's one of them. And when when those conditions are there, uh, when that that beauty and that environment is there, and the space and the relaxation is there, it's it's always quite wonderful. Uh, I like it when he plays Indian classical music for making yeah. love because it's yeah. spiritually very high. Yeah. So everything. I mean the the. The right wine. Sandra loves Gerwitzterminer, so we have to have the right wine. And um, you know, it's it's yeah. it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. It's like a it's like a play. You know, and you have to have all those elements coming together. And we're pretty good at getting all those things lined up. But we don't get neurotic when it's not there. If all those elements aren't coming together, you know. So I think this is the 
this is the difference, I think, in myself from this relationship to past one. You know, I think I was still coming out of need in the former relationship. You know, like, even though I may not have admitted it, I felt a need for sex. Whereas in this relationship, it's always, well, what can we give to each other in this kind of beautiful vibration so it's more of a giving than a needing mm. that made all the difference in the world so then you know you know if those conditions aren't there i don't feel deprived mm. i feel isn't it great that we know what the best is mm. and we all, we only settle for the best so yeah. that's so, really beautiful yeah, yeah that's different and i yeah. think for guy that can be an issue you know like i think guys tend to kind of needed it more than women and so they're they're maybe too forceful or something i don't know but i don't have any of that in this relationship it was it's a totally new paradigm for our sex life than what i had before mm. i i and Sandra, you were also a public figure and you were a teacher and you were traveling and you were doing your work before you become a couple. What, what happened as a result when you came together as a couple and were bringing this teaching out? What, did you see any difference in, uh, in yeah, business-wise? Yeah, because he really, really, really supports me, and he handles a lot. He works on the internet all the time to make sure our international business works. So I've never had that kind of support, and it's constant. He's constantly supporting the work, and so it's made everything so much easier for me. I can relax a lot more, and I would say he works really hard on doing that. So he kind of manages the business besides he's a painter, and uh, he's a writer, and so recently he just finished a book that we were working on. Now we're actually writing books together also, which is really fun. I, I was the one that used to write books by myself. Now I have the pleasure of writing with him. So we're happy to say that that really works. Mm -hmm. Well, that reminds me, uh, you know, one of the books that Sandra has written is called Rock Your World with the Divine Mother. So her relationship with this divine mother energy was something that intrigued me from the beginning. Um, and I got to know it deeper and from going around the world, especially to India, where, where their concept of the divine is much more balanced in the masculine and the feminine. Whereas in the West, we tend to be more, more a little out of balance in the patriarchy. You know, so this, this divine mother energy, when I came into the relationship, was very present. Because Sandra had given so much attention to that. And then you discover as a man that there, there is an energy, you know, in the East they would call it Shakti. Or I guess in the West, uh, artists would call it their, their muse or their, their uh, inspiration, their feminine inspiration. So when I got with Sandra, uh, I could palpably feel that energy supporting me, that Shakti energy, and I became much more creative. And I did things that I didn't even know were in me. Like I, I never wrote a book before myself. I mean, I had kept journals, but I had never formally written a book. So um, I wrote a book about my teacher, Tara Singh, who was my Course in Miracles teacher. And then we started writing books together. I think our first one together was Spiritual Intimacy and a book on liberation breathing. So we started writing together and creating things together. And that potential was really awakened in me out of this holy relationship with Sandra. And that had a lot to do with the Divine Mother energy. Mm. That's so beautiful how, how I'm hearing that the feminine and the divine feminine were supporting your masculine in, in its creativity. And so it became that. Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Beautiful. I've um, done some of the things I did without, without that energy, mm -hmm. without her, her feminine energy. Yeah. Well, you know, being a painter, he said to me, well, what am I going to do for a studio if I'm on the road with you? And I said, 
Uh, just paint in the trainings in front of people while I teach and, and they'll love it. And mm. It's kind of outrageous, but that's what we do. I, I'm teaching and he does some parts of the training with mm. me, but he's over in the corner painting mm. the masters and, and huh. people really mm. like to watch mm. that. Mm. We, we have been covering a lot, but is there something we should really talk about that we haven't covered that you think is important to highlight about the uniqueness of this conscious relationship? Yes, I would say you have to be coming from forgiving everyone in your past. You have to be 100% forgiving your mother, your father, your past lovers, your past uh, spouses, and, and your siblings. And everyone, that's the key. And that, that dissolves your anger. And to be in a relationship with no anger is such a blessing. And you can relax. And then you can have that deep ease I was talking about. Mm. So uh, we try to have a relationship free of anger. And um, if it comes up when we would just breathe it out right away, um, we wouldn't hang on to it. So mm. we don't have like any kind of big fights or anything like that. And uh, we don't even have bickering. You know, some people think, well, bickering is normal in a relationship. Or fighting is normal. We don't agree with that. We feel you, you should have peace, and peace is powerful. And when we're in our peace, we're much more powerful. And the other thing is we can both be in our power together. I don't, uh, I'm not under his ceiling. He's not under my ceiling. Mm -hmm. And we're equals. So I think those are two important things. Mm -hmm. Can I add anything? Yes, I think this uh, uh, agreement to be conflict free, it has a lot of other things with it, like you have to decide that anger has no place really in the relationship. Um, because usually anger, we think that it can solve a problem, but it doesn't really. It, it may get you through the day, but then you hang on to a lot of negative charge from that that encounter and you develop resentments and you develop you know withholds uh things that are not so healthy that are a result of the the anger and the expression of the anger so we we really give a lot of attention in our relationship when we're feeling even slightly irritated to to work that through and the way we do it is like we'll say I'm feeling activated and the thoughts I'm having that are making me feel that way. And then you express them and then take responsibility for them. And then you try to change them in the moment, you know, to a higher thought. So in that way, we're always uh, self introspecting and taking responsibility for our feelings and also trying to go to a higher vibrational feeling and thought mm -hmm. and and that's a practice that's that's really the main spiritual practice mm -hmm. if you if you want to you know talk about that so uh, i think also our guru taught us that you don't suppress your anger that hurts your body you don't dump it on someone else like your mate that hurts them what do you do then you change the thought that causes the anger and you breathe out the charge now that's a simple technique that babaji taught us and it's absolutely wonderful Mm. I guess one more thing I would add is the importance of having a mission together. Mm. Um, we're lucky because we have the same exact mission and we're together 24-7. People think that's crazy sometimes, but we like it. We <laughs> like to be together that much. And uh, some people say... 24-7, 365. Yeah, some people say, oh, <laughs> some people say, I would feel smothered, but we don't feel that way. Yeah. Uh, however, most people aren't going to be working together like we do, but, but they can still have a mission on the side of service uh, to, to humanity that they do together. I think that is so important. Mm -hmm. And you asked me what else was important. I, I can't stress enough how important that is to do some active service. And our guru said the formula for happiness is love, truth, simplicity, and service to mankind. And so those are really important. And then he gave us the mantra, Om Namah Shivaya, and the breathing to clear ourselves. So it's a wonderful formula that we live by. That's really wonderful. And this is also what you inspire individuals and couples uh, in your teachings. So how do people find you if they want to learn more from you? 
Well, a, as you know, more of that sort of thing is happening on the internet. So um, you can go to sandraray.com and you can see our quests and our programs there. And we're building a new website, sandraray-marcusray.com and there'll be things there. So you could Google Sandra Ray and a lot of stuff will come up. Mm -hmm. and yeah. you can, yeah. you and uh, you can have a field day just okay. just googling some of her things, and all of her books are on Amazon, and my books are on Amazon. So uh, yeah. it's not hard to find us if you really <laughs> want to go there. <laughs> no, it's well, not. We're, we're fortunate to have producers around the world um, in many countries in Europe and Australia, and also, and um, so they bring the people to us. We travel a lot. We're on the road a lot, going to these different countries. And then we take people on spiritual retreat. We take people to Bali, for example. That's the next one coming up. Yeah, and we also give uh, private, individual uh, liberation breathing coaching sessions over Skype, mm -hmm. and we found that very effective. And many people sign up for you know to do a series of ten sessions with us over a period of months, and uh, they've they've transformed their life as a result of this process. And uh, yeah, so it's our passion to yeah. bring liberation breathing out to the world. And uh, we've written books on it and mm. it's all over the place. You can yeah. just do it. Mm. The liberation breathing is a very, very powerful experience. I've done it myself with you and it's really powerful. So. Thank you so much for being here with me today and sharing your, um, your wisdom and experience. And it's, it's been a pleasure.